Greetings, everyone. It's me again. I am super excited to be here. I am doing the 50 Days to 50 campaign. Uh, super excited to just talk to all my friends, you know, my old bosses, all very, very cool things. So I'm excited about my next conversation. It is with one of my, uh, one of my dear, dear friends, uh, Miss Oliva Fernandez. Oliva, yay! <laughs> Let me get you some sound effects because we have sound effects in here. So I'm like, I got, we're giving everyone cheers. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, I am so glad to have you here. Please introduce yourself and tell everyone who you are. So I'm Oliva and I'm originally from Spain via Germany, not German, you know, but got some German characteristics, which Tamara can probably attest to. But uh, I've lived in, in New York, Tamara and I, we work together, and now I live in Miami Beach, living the life, what can I say, paradise. Paradise. <laughs> Miami is living paradise. So, Oliva, let's talk a little bit about when we first met. We met at Pearson Education and talk a little bit about what you were doing there and then when we met. <laughs> well, I was the marketing director for adult education and higher education for one of the largest publishers that there is in textbooks publishing, you know, high school, colleges, and I worked in the ESL wing, so it's just like education for students that want to teach and uh, learn English. Also have uh, textbooks to teach teachers, so it's a little bit of both. It's really a publisher, educational publisher. And uh, so when Tamara came on the scene, she was the one uh, to help us with um, digital marketing because we were like we were like the big elephant was stumbling tumbling with print and doing brochures and kinds of things and so we knew we needed to hire uh, someone that brought in a fresh perspective and that was Tamara. We did so many cool things together, right? I loved working with you because you you gave that creative freedom. And I think there was so much latitude at that time, uh, especially with digital at that time. So we were trying and experimenting with things. And, you know, it was it was a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Pearson was the uh, place that, you know, I saw the sales, the, my first presentation was actually at the sales meeting there. And I think I, I'll never forget the feeling of euphoria <laughs> of presenting <laughs> and like being like, this is what you guys do. <laughs> it was. And you felt euphoria. And let me tell you, the rest of the people listening to you were feeling the same exact way. Because that's one of the things that you do. You bring that energy, right? You no expectation, but a lot of expectation and a lot of knowledge to, you know, the field that you were familiar with. And you brought that to us. So it was a great innovational experience. It was a great innovational experience. And then you and I got closer and closer. I mean, you've been to Trinidad. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> I even made it to the, the tail end of Carnival. <laughs> We've been to Trinidad. You've been, have you been, you did Tobago too, right? We did Trinidad and Tobago. We went to the jazz festival. We saw Shakira, you know, amongst others. You know, that was uh, interesting how we got to get in without having tickets. But that's for another story. <laughs> 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 Listen, <laughs> you know, it's the journey way. It's so funny, right? Because um, when we connected, it was, I started to understand more culturally about, because the Spaniards, you know, you guys, um, <laughs> how nice <laughs> us <laughs> in Trinidad. But culturally, it wasn't you per se, but culturally, we had so many similarities, right? We were... <laughs> You would you were the person that ended the party, and I'm the person that ended the party. I was just like, what happened? <laughs> Who is this? This is this is my kindred spirit right here. <laughs> right. And and then I was saying, well, we're Spaniards, you know, we never know when the party ends, and we're always the last ones to leave. And so when I met you, I was like, Wow, she's just like me. <laughs> so I guess there is um, a cultural <laughs> fluidity. <laughs> right. I think one of the things I go back to is that we would actually work on projects and I would come to your house. We would work on things. We were working on so many things. I learned so much from you just around 
uh, you know, pulling a presentation together, really, you know, being able to to speak to an audience. I still think about methodology. I remember from then it was, you know, the methodology, how people learn, all those fundamentals that I learned from you, because you also have a teaching background. So those things are still core principles that I consider when I'm thinking about an audience, when I'm thinking about people. A lot of that foundation from some of the things I learned from you are still very present in what I do today. So I'd love to thank you for that. And, you know, my presentation style evolved a lot because in, at, at Pearson, you guys were presenting all the time. So you would get to see, hey, this is how you capture an audience. This is how you draw them in. Um, and then the other thing was building a marketing plan. I remember the first marketing plan experience. <laughs> I was like, man, this is insane. You guys took it so serious. And it was it was an event in building a marketing plan. And a lot of that foundation is is, is still, again, things that I use from Audubon Digital. Right. And I think one of the things that you brought was very fresh is that you were not in education and you didn't have that particular experience. However, your broadness and your way to visualize. I remember when we were in my house and we were coming up with a storyline. Okay, let's think of that student that comes to the country. Let's create that that life for them, right? And let's let's make it into a story and create the storyboard for that. And I believe you might have even taken that when you went and worked for St. Jude. It's like the, creating the personas, you know, and that was the onset of when in publishing, we realized we have to create a persona. We have to be able to relate to that customer, to the teacher, to the student, or to whoever your, your client is, or to whoever you need to help and work with. And that's one of the things I remember, remember quite vividly that, uh, you always have that way of visualizing and thinking outside the box and going from, from A to Z and having all the steps in place, you know. I see the story in my head. <laughs> I see the story in my head playing out. But I think what was interesting at Pearson too, it was – while not being a teacher, what was it was an immigrant story, right? Because there were the people who were learning, so that I could identify with. And there were a lot of things, you know, and you, you know, being an immigrant, you've seen it, you've gone through a lot of things in America that takes you through that. So just wrapping that around someone who didn't speak English, right, really gave you the opportunity to say, here's how you craft this story. Uh, because, you know, I mean, especially now we're <laughs> immigrants, we're an endangered species. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> <It's a passport. laughs> but it was that was I think that that was the catalyst. So there was an empathy there for that, being able to leverage that to really be able to, uh, you know, truly help bring it to fruition. And I think the opportunity for creativity too, because. Again, we were doing things that were new and digital was new at that point in time. And it was adding those creative elements that, that you know, I think was, was really important. People like Kate, you know, I mean, you know, rest in peace. You know, she was amazing also, um, you know, just that, again, all these creative marketers who were now open to the idea of digital and this new space that we were in. And I mean, look at where we are now. Could you imagine? <laughs> As you look back, right, as you look back on the time, as you look back and just kind of knowing me, right, what are maybe what are some of the traits that you have seen that I have been able to effectively transition from then I was in my early 30s, maybe late 20s at that point in time. <laughs> Could you imagine I'm going to be 50? <laughs> Just, that's blowing my mind. But what are some of the traits you think I've been able to transition over into the business? Well, I think, you know, uh, one of the things that I remember is always the laughter, right? I wouldn't say impulsive, but I would say the spontaneity that brings with that you bring, which I think is very healthy and, and good because you, you're able to change directions, right? Um, electrifying. I don't know. That's a word that came to mind. Because you are, you sort of contagiously, you know, like you get people, okay, let's, do, you know, and, and I remember you say, this is not a problem, this is not an issue, this is, you know, 
everything has a solution, right? So you are very solution-based. There's nothing that cannot be tackled. Uh, I also believe that you are a doer, you know, uh, you get things done. And I, I, I feel that those are things that can be translated into the business. I mean, now you're working for yourself and you're bringing all these things to your own business, right? Uh, persistence. I mean, I don't think you give up. I don't think you know the word. <laughs> Does, it doesn't even exist in your vocabulary, you know? <laughs> And always, always two steps ahead. I think you're always thinking ahead. Okay, what's that? Okay, okay, we're here now, but what's what's next? What's next? How can I how can I get there? What what is needed? Where where do we need to go now? And instead of waiting, so you're extremely proactive. And those are things um, I think that are all qualities that you bring to to uh, your understanding, your knowledge. The way that you translate, it doesn't matter whether you've worked in that industry. You can translate into any industry. Like you said, I was not in education, right? But I am an immigrant. So you can draw from your background, from your past experiences, and translate that into any new endeavor. And I think those are all, you know, a great, a great box, you know, that you can pull from. You wear many hats. <laughs> you wear many hats, you know. I'm like, okay, they can be this. And I, I find that um, that flexibility and adaptability also yeah. are strengths. Yeah. And then the fact that you are able to make friends you, because you can relate to people. You're able to take a big picture and then and break it down. And so I think that is a skill that I definitely got from my dad, right? It's being able to take the thing and break it down. But also, I remember my mom, can't is a word. She said, she would, she would tell us that can't is not a word of the dictionary. And it was because, I guess, C-A-N-T, apostrophe T was no word of the dictionary. But later on in life, I think I found out it was. And I was just like, well, she lied to me the whole time. But you start realizing that there is nothing that you can't do. And you start thinking about it. And you're like, OK, well, how do I tackle these things? And if we're living life, how do we live it to the fullest extent, right? And and that you live like that, right? You you live life live life to the fullest, and that's what a part of this has been for me in this journey. It's like, okay, how am I, you know, almost balls to the wall all the time, right? You know, how am I living out loud, living it a hundred percent, and trying the thing because I don't want to look back and say what if, right? What if I had, you know? And so those are the moments to really try and and push and to. The Caribbean perspective gives you that, you know, remain calm, easy. And, you know, we're truly, we're Limas, so we're like making friends. It's like <laughs> the whole country, that's what we do. <laughs> we're like, come to my country, make friends. So it's been good. And then there's good people like you, right? The support system, the mentorship you've provided to me, the things you've given to me um, to help me move forward has also been, you know, things that I look back on. And I'm like, if I didn't have these friendships, these relationships you know i don't know that i would be here so um you know it was we were definitely in that space of iron sharpening iron and i i learned so much from you and i definitely hold you in that high regard as a mentor and a friend so i i appreciate the fact that you took time to you know to to, to do this with me <laughs> because it was like oh perfect you made me all warm and fuzzy inside <laughs> So I love that. I love that. I love that. You know, and I thank you so much for being with me through this time. And I know we'll continue to be friends. Um, so yeah, thank you for doing this. <laughs> You're welcome. Always there. Yep. <laughs> well, I will see you very soon and we will talk very soon. Thank you so much for doing the recording, Oliva. <laughs> All right. All peace and blessings. <laughs>